Hey, I'm Eric from Worlds of Run. Today I'm going to show you guys how I make custom supports for one of our models. So right here we're looking at uh, a piece that we've test printed and we found that we have some uh, some areas that really could use some supports. So we tried to use the supports in uh, a couple of the 3D slicing packages and we really didn't like the results. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to hand place supports. So one of the first things I did was I set up a base plate and that's there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the points uh, that touch the surface of the piece. Uh, the reason we're doing it this way instead of letting the software do it is I have more control and I can make uh, more intelligent choices about where I'm placing it and optimization. Uh, so in my scene here, you'll see there's a this little bar here. That's a tool for me for measurement. That's uh, three millimeters by three millimeters by three millimeters. And right here, uh, we're just going to take and adjust uh, uh, a support for this crenellation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that part here and I'm going to insert a point using ZBrush's uh, insert mesh tools. And I built this little point here and I'm going to just adjust that. And of course it went inside the model the wrong way. So it rotated and I'm just going to push this inside here. So what I'm looking for is a little bit of touch. Now that of course will produce a defect, which is one of the reasons that we try very hard to produce pieces that don't need supports. Um, this piece needs supports even though we cut it up, but it's far less supports than if we did it in another way. So again, I'm gonna push this in just a little bit and that should do it. So we're only looking for a couple of supports because this part here isn't terribly long and most of the defect happened on the outer edge, which means that we were able to get most of the way out and then it drooped so we're looking to create some bridge uh some bridges basically um uh so that we can kind of fit this to the to the part so i'm going to extract these guys which is going to make it easier for me to work with them and i'm going to extract them i'm splitting them into their own sub tools so that way i don't have to mess with or accidentally damage uh the 3d printed part uh, in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just going to run a fill hole operation. Now, I could actually, actually, you know what? I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to fill this in a basic way. So I've got closed holes right here in my toolbar, and then I'm going to slice this. I know it's a couple of extra steps that I probably could have optimized for, but I'm not really worried about it. I'm just going to draw that down into my base plate, which is already set to the bottom of, or to the printer bed. And we should be good to go. So I managed to get one, but not the other. So I'm going to grab this one now. There we go. And these are fairly these are fairly beefy supports. Um, usually they're beefy because when I use when I make a support um, that's longer, I'm going to want some more volume to it. Um, in this case, these are short and stubby, so I'm not really too fussed. And the base plate is pl plenty, plenty large to support um, the print. Um, you can see that it's roughly a millimeter high. That's plenty. Um, we don't need to get excessive. Um, but if we do find that on another test print, if this doesn't work, it's easy enough to fix. Um, now, right now, these are just interpenetrating parts. But before I commit this and take this over to 3D printing, I'll Boolean it into a single object. Then I'll clean it. And then we'll send it off for test printing again, because we actually have to make a couple more of these uh, parts. <clears throat> And that's basic, that's a basic support. Now, if you get a support that's really long, like one that was over here, you might want to do some crisscrossing. And that's really just coming in here and uh, adding adding a bar or something that's going to be under 45 degrees so that we can uh, have added rigidity to the support. So I'm just going to show you how I might do that. I'm not actually going to take the time to develop it in full. But I'm going to go ahead and insert, insert this cube, orient it, stretch it out and give it an angle that's going to be useful to uh, to my parts and you can see these zigzagging up you can imagine these zigzagging up a uh, a, a uh, set of channels um, all the way to the top to give it added support again i'd probably spend a little bit of time on them make them look a little bit nicer but really i just want to make sure that they're less than 45 degrees uh, or well, actually greater than 45 degrees uh, so they need very little uh, excess um, support 
material or uh, so they print cleanly um, more for me than for anybody else so I'd extend that out and then I'd insert that like so and create a boolean again one of the reasons we're doing this is because well I don't like the results on the slicer you're probably saying ah oh, that's such a waste of time well it's a waste of time only for me because uh, I'm passing this on to the customer um, who's actually going to benefit from this because they're they're not going to have to do supports um, by the computer they can just accept what we send them um, in the ideal world I'd have a little bit more control of how I do supports in say for instance uh, my slicer but the truth is is that some of them do a great job and some of them do a so-so job and we didn't like the results on any of them for this basic part so there you go so that's me just cleaning that up in fact I might even bevel it um, if I can grab the right tool. Bevel, polyvolve. There we go. I don't know why it did that, but oh, I know why it did that. That was my fault. Delete hidden. So now I've got a bevel. Um, it'd be great to have like multiples of these. So only, I'd only use these on really, really tall objects uh, or really, really tall support systems. I wouldn't use it in something so short because it's kind of overkill, uh, but I don't have a long one to show an example of. Um, and it's just basically making it so that you have a little bit more stability going up because these parts aren't terribly big. I mean, right now the shaft is only about two to two and a half millimeters wide. I could probably make it a little bit bigger, um, but that should do the trick. There we go. So I'm going to delete that because I don't need it. I'm not going to use it. But this is a basic uh, basic uh, idea on supports. Now the reason we're using this is that this angle is kind of light. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So real quick. Uh, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab my insert cube again. And the reason I'm doing this is because then I can orient the, I can change the orientation tool. So I'm going to change my background back to black. Okay. And you'll see, I'll grab this guy down here. If I rotate this guy, I get values and how far it's going to go. So there's 45 degrees. So what happened was is that the first part of this line, this is under 45 degrees from the bias. So that's going to be fine. Um, but there's also a step down and then there's this long narrow shelf sticking off from here. And that's why we have a problem with this part. It's not the angle. It's the length of the part that's extruded out or drawn out along that line without any secondary support. So that's something to be aware of when you're building a part. Most of the time what you want to do is like like I'm using this tool as a this bar as a measurement tool, you want to get less than a 45 degree angle. So if we take this guy here who's upside down, it's a modified modified part. So we take him right there. If we were to say for instance flatten this piece so that we could print him on the print bed, this 45 degree angle should print fine. This is one of the reasons that arches work because an arch goes up 90 degrees and then slowly goes over. Um, and arches mean that we ne almost never need support on an arch if it's um, either perfectly round or more elongated vertically than widthwise. If it gets elongated uh, horizontally, you're gonna need supports because that long length is gonna be a problem. Um, that long length in the middle that is uh, greater than 45 is going to start being a problem. But generally speaking, it's not such a big issue with most of the stuff that we build because we, we know this principle and we use it a lot. And it's just a cut-up thing. Um, you got to figure out where your cuts are going to be. A lot of cases, I'd rather cut something to minimize um, supports. So thanks for coming out, checking out, uh, playing in custom supports with me. Um, uh, I hope that you guys are out there doing cool stuff and playing great games. Remember, uh, Worlds Overrun is all about uh, elevating your gaming. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the future.